Okay, so Ben, tell me what you understand by the term cancer immunotherapy. So I would say cancer immunotherapy is any therapy you give to a patient that um, harnesses the immune system to fight cancer or even to prevent cancer. Um, and I suppose I'd say, you know, it's an area that's long been looked upon as, as holding a lot of promise, but actually, you know, a lot of people have regarded it as failing to deliver that promise for a long time. But I suppose, if we're honest, that's over the last five years or so, that's really changed completely and really being thought of as a kind of tipping point in the fight against cancer. Key question really back at you, Gary, I guess, would be why are people looking upon cancer immunotherapy as so significant clinically and in what way you know, does it differ from, from other treatments we've been using in the past? It wasn't really till 2012 when the so-called checkpoint blockade drugs came in, drugs that basically activate your own immune system to fight against your own cancer, that we really started to think there is an immune system against cancer, you know, that really, really works. And we've been using drugs here now, which are very straightforward drugs to give. They're given intravenously once every two or three weeks. We've been using them now since about 2013. And some of the responses we've had in really difficult to treat tumours, patients that have not responded to chemotherapy have been quite astounding. Mm -hmm. In other words, patients who are actively progressing with cancer resistant to chemotherapy, we've armed their own immune cells to fight their own tumour. And to see their you know, tumours falling apart literally and going into complete remission some of these patients has been absolutely astounding. It's been a, a, an epiphanal experience really. So Gary, we've got um, kind of elements of research going on in all of those three spheres, the kind of unleashing, um, you know, a, a patient's own immune system and also the idea of vaccination and finally the idea of engineering cells. Which, which um, so how do you see Birmingham kind of uh, and, and the kit grouping as contributing to those areas? I think we're, we're active in all of these. As I said at the start, I think one of the most interesting fields is where it doesn't work. And at the moment, it still is the majority. I mean, when you see the responses, it, it puts the hairs on the back of your neck up. There's no doubt about that. But not all patients respond and we have to understand why. We're very interested in how the genetics of a tumour prevent that tumour from having an immune system active against it. We're doing a lot of work on that. Tell us a little bit about the KIC. So the KIC group in Gary is the Cancer Immunology and Immunotherapy Centre. And what it is is a local grouping um, of clinicians, academics and clinical trialists that are collectively focused on har harnessing the power of the immune system to fight cancer. Um, and they're pre predominantly it's a grouping based at the University of Birmingham, but also surrounding hospitals, including the Queen Elizabeth Hosp Hospital Birmingham. Um, and it, we have strength in, in a number of areas, um, but things like tumor antigen identification, um, or different immunotherapy strategies, and understanding really what's going on underneath the bonnet of a tumor that's really driving it, what are the kind of nuts and bolts inside uh, that we need to get to grips with in order to um, to push new, new areas of, of, of therapy development. So Gary, why is Birmingham a, a good place for doing this kind of activity? Well, I think one of the biggest advantages, we are a single biomedical campus. We don't sort of have scientists in a university in one part of the city and then clinicians in another part of the city. We all work on the same campus and that allows for a really good free exchange of ideas between clinical academics asking you questions and scientists asking us questions about our patients and that really, really works well. But one frustration about the, the f traditional funding schemes is that they are quite long-lived. It takes a long time to get them they're quite slow to, um, to acquire and also um, they're quite restricted in that you have a grant for a certain project, you can't step out of line too much. Would you agree with that again? Yeah, I mean and this is where philanthropic funding is so critically important to a successful unit. I mean there's no two ways about this. If you think about a grant, as I say, if you have a really great idea that you want to put forward tomorrow, you can't put that forward tomorrow. If you're going for a grant, it means you've got to put, you know, put it forward, put it together. There's a huge amount of work and you can often be not successful. And even if you are successful, it could be a year, 18 months before you get that money, by which time the rest of the world's moved on. You need money that you can respond quickly to the new ideas as they come up. You might go to a meeting, have a great idea. Unless you've got the money that you can pull on at that time in response mode, you're never going to be able to do that piece of work. And that's where philanthropic funding is critically important. And I think big successful places need that sort of money that can be pulled down that you can't normally access through a normal grant uh, mechanism.